Hey everybody, welcome back to another creative tutorial. Today we are looking at Krita from a fresh perspective. So I'm using 5.2.3 right now, and this video and the next one will be focused on people who are brand new to Krita and are looking to try it out as a Photoshop alternative for illustration um, and whatever else. We're actually going to keep it very simple and just keep it to the basics. As a um, little tip, if you want to learn something specific within Krita, just go to my YouTube channel, go to videos and look at the search bar and type it in whatever it is you're looking for. I probably have a video for just about everything within Krita at this point, so you can always go back and look. So we're going to get started. When you first open Krita, you can see we have the news section, which is actually really, really nice because I don't always pay attention to the news for Krita and I always miss the updates and people in my servers need to tell me, hey, there's a new Krita update. So this usually helps me um, see that, hey, there's a new update out and you should update Krita, which is very, very helpful. And here you have your recent images. So if you're working on a bunch of files, you're like, you know, it's been a while since I worked on this uh, Sunday sketch here. I'm going to open that back up and work on it some more or see what you last worked on, just in general history of what you've been doing. That's gonna uh, show up here under recent images and we can go ahead and clear that. So when you install Creator for the first time, you open it, you're brand new, it's basically gonna be empty, not a big deal. And then we have some really um, useful links here. We have the Creator website, the community, um, the getting started. So if you prefer to read and see what Creator's um, getting started document looks like, you can go there as well. It might be more in depth than what I'm doing. Powdered, <laughs> powered by the KDE. You can go to support Krita. This is, is open source. Um, no, this isn't like a proprietary software or anything. So a lot of people are doing this on their own dime, which is very, pre I'm very appreciative of it. So if you want to give them some extra money uh, as a thank you for creating this awesome software, definitely go there. And then we have the user manual, which has um, more technical information and other stuff for a lot of the features within Krita. So we're going to go to start new uh, with a new image. We have the create new document. There's a ton of options here. Um, as you can see, create from clipboard to view like a print screen. You can create a new document based off of those dimensions of whatever print screen you have or uh, clipped uh, like view or image that you made with like Windows, uh, I think it's uh, the snap tool or snapshot tool or green snapshot, whatever it is you use. You do texture templates, DSLR, design, all that good stuff. You can also make your own custom ones. I do have a video on that. Um, somewhere on my channel, which is pretty nice. So I'm just going to keep everything as it is. This is just my default settings. I'm going to go to create. I'm going to close that. So my overall view is custom. So here in the upper right hand corner, we have a workspaces uh, option. So we have a ton of different options here. Um, I won't be going over all of those in this video. I have that in another video. I have my custom workspace space, which is this, but I can go to the default. So then when you open Creator for the first time, this is what it's going to look like. So you have your file menus up here, your toolbar, you have mirror tools. Um, this is the wraparound mode. For me, you can hit W and it shows up. That is no longer the case. So if you click this, um, this is very really useful for texture. So when you draw, it just repeats it. So you can see how it looks in the pattern texture. So if you turn it off, it's just the file image itself. Pretty neat. You have your layers over here, your color selector, your brush presets, all your other toolbar here, which has um, your brush tool, pen, text, reference images, selection tools, all that good stuff. And that's the basic overview of Krita here. Another important thing to know when you're first starting off is to go to settings and configure Krita. This is where a lot of the important things you're going to want to know are like for your tablet settings. Maybe you want to um, adjust the pressure outside of the actual tablet pressure settings. This is where you would do that. Um, I personally recommend turning the Windows 8 um, plus pointer or whatever input. I, I recommend turning that off. Um, not everyone has an issue with it, but I use a Helion tablet and it just worked out best to turn to use the WinTab and not this. 
um, just a quick pointer there. We have performance, so if you want to change the memory limit, color management, display. Uh, I also recommend using the Direct 3D, but there are other options in here you can change. They also go over in other videos. We have Canvas input settings, which are just like shortcuts and things like that. Um, actual keyboard shortcuts are in here, which are customizable as well. You have your general settings, you have your pop-up palette settings, which I'll go over in a second. Canvas only. So if you go into Canvas only mode, this is what is going to be um, hidden, which is everything. So if you don't want everything hidden, you can uncheck it. And the Canvas only mode is the tab uh, button on your keyboard. And then color selector settings. You have a plugin manager and you can do author. So right now everything's just set to anonymous for me, but you can make a new author and put that in there. And I believe that will be stored in the metadata of the image or the file that you're working on. So real quick to canvas only mode, you hit tab and this is what it looks like. So this is really helpful if you just really want to focus in on drawing nothing else. You don't need any special tools or anything. That's what you can do when you hit tab to get out of it. So we also have dockers here. So this, I'm going to unlock this and pull this out. This is considered a docker. So they're basically just little panels that have uh, special tools or settings or whatever it is in them. So the advanced color selector, this is a docker. This is a docker. They're just their own confined little uh, spaces for these tools and information. And we will, I'll go over more of the dockers in the next video. I'm actually going to reset this back to my custom workspace, which I have tool options, channels, and stuff in here. So another tool that might surprise some people using Creative for the first time is the pop-up palette. If you right click, it shows up. This is a quick selection tool for your colors, your brushes. So if you're in your workspace mode or your, your full canvas mode, this is a good way to focus on just drawing and whatever it is you're doing. And then you can still access your favorite brushes and things like that um, within this right click. I do have a video on that as well. I think a couple of videos, including updated ones, where you can change the settings and how many brushes you want to appear. I believe you can go up to 100. You can, you can put a lot in here. You can change the tags and what you want to show up. So yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> so I have um, some extra stuff I've imported. This might take a minute. Nope, there it goes. Stamp. So I can always right click, change what I want to show up so I don't need to worry about dockers or um, losing some real estate basically when I'm drawing. Hit tab again. And that's basically it for Krita. When you first open it for the first time, um, you're not sure where everything is. Uh, we'll go over, like I said in the next video, the other dockers here that you see and how to get those and how to, to change those up. Um, as well as customizing the workspace just a little bit more and where you can find some of those settings to customize the workspace. Uh, this is just a quick two-part series of just getting started. Nothing too crazy or advanced. Like I said, if there is something you want to learn more about, I there's a 90% chance I already have a video on it. Um, just go to my YouTube channel and search for that um, or ask me in the comments down below and I will direct you to that video. If there's something specific you would like to know about getting started with Increta, let me know. I'll put that in the second video as well. Hopefully this kind of gave you a good overview of where the basics are though so you're not completely lost when you open Creta for the first time. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one or future Creative tutorials which will be coming out that are more advanced and more in-depth than these two videos will be. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.